Uh, Toronto Man's Channel 5. People pay me to poo on their chest. How many clients do you have? What? Guys will pay me to poo on their chest. How many clients do you have? I have like three like regulars. How much per turd? I'd say like a 200. Sometimes they make me stay like over the weekend. I on them every time I have to go. When I have the runs, like they like to get shit on when I have the run. Like what? diarrhea. Well, I don't have a problem like on people because I like went to jail. So like you have to shit in front of people when you're in a cell. So I went to jail for pepper spraying someone. Why'd you pepper spray him? Um, because she was trying to fight me and I don't fight because that's right. And I'm like a grown woman, so. Would you let someone poo on you? No. <laughs> Why not? Because that's gross. Would you shit on somebody for $200? Let's say you get two clients a week. It's 400 a week. Do the math, 1,600 a month. That's 20,000 a year. I think about 35% of y'all niggas would do it. If it was, I think, you would, 35% of y'all would do it. I think so. But you do it to them. Yeah, but I don't even, I like, I hate men. Like, I'm not letting them shit on me. I'm Sagittarius Shoddy. And I'm known for being a battery ting. What's that mean? I get fucked by multiple guys at a time. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. What's your biggest turnoff? White penis. Because it looks like raw chicken. When you say white, do you mean all, all types of white? So you're including Eastern Europeans in that bracket? Yeah. It, it looks like raw chicken. Like. What about like Central Asian whites? Like. Oh, so she likes that BBC thousand. She likes to be DP with that BBC thousand. Kazakhs. Um, I have bad experience with Asians, so... All Asians? No, I had one bad experience, so I don't fuck with Asians anymore. All the women here are whores. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 the nigga doesn't even know how accurate what he just said was. This parking lot, he has no clue. He hit that shit with a bullseye. He don't even know yet to this video, until he watched the video. I don't know. Never mind, you have to cut it there. This guy caps way too much, so he can't even trust anything. Britney fam. Okay, okay. Never mind, you have to cut it there. Yeah, this guy was telling me the story about Britney fam. He was at Britney's crib, and you know, he was telling me she had all these toys and shit. He said, don't, don't even put the mic in his face. He's talking <laughs> cap, bro. There's, I don't know anybody named Britney. Toronto motherfucker. Are you from Toronto? I'm not from Toronto. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Not your Budweiser. Budweiser. Why? Uh, they're both shit. Why are you so strong? I lift. That's facts. Trudeau, fuck him. How come? Just cuz. It's the craziest drug you've ever done. Black tar, heroin. What do you think? Why? Like, literally, what will possess you to ever do that? What is the benefit, my nigga? It made you want to do it in the first place. That's a good I, I seen this guy doing it. Yeah, see, I'm telling you what, chat. Peer pressure is one of the most dangerous things. If you know a nigga, if you are friends with a nigga, that's doing some wild shit. I'm telling you, you are now way more likely to also do some wild shit, bro. It's the friends you keep. I'm telling you, man. If your friend is doing black tar heroin, man, please pack them ass up. Him and his mom. Him and his mom together. Hey, have you ever done black tar heroin? No, my dad has. Bye. What's your dad's number? He doesn't have one. I just, he sees me when he sees me. Do you have a message for your dad? Please lay off the crystal meth. I love you. Hey, yo, what's going on? Oh my, hey, Toronto is not like this. I don't know where the fuck this nigga is, bro, but I've never had a convo with a nigga that's trying to, all my life, I don't know a single human that's done heroin. I don't know one, bro. I don't know. Oh, this is Ottawa? Oh, thank God. Oh my God. I, I don't know where the fuck he's finding these people from. Okay, the first clip, that was definitely Toronto, okay? You can see it in the background. I can save her. <laughs> no, you can't! She's gone! A, life, a, a lifetime of fucking trauma, bro! She has daddy issues, bro! Her dad does black tar heroin and crystal meth! You can't save that! A platoon of therapists can't save that. Time, time. You good, time? You saying, time? Oh, this before nigga. I was saying, fam, I was saying, bro. And before I was saying, bro, I was saying, dog. And a dog and a bro is still your fam. So I just took away the dog, took away the bro, and now I say, fam. So we're here in Toronto. Bro. For those who don't know, can you tell us your name and what you do for a living? My name is Box. And I. Bro, where do they. Bro, how does everybody that goes to Toronto find this nigga? Why is he in every interview? Everyone always finds this nigga. He's everywhere!
just get money i don't really have a job but like i hustle i have a lot of clothes to be honest i'm wearing bape and gucci right now that's true don't sleep on my music eh? don't sleep let me tell you guys the story about how i almost died smoking a cigarette so you know, i go outside to smoke a cigarette i'm on my porch sitting down smoking a cigarette and the car drives by slowly he's grilling me so i'm grilling him back i had the cigarette in my mouth i'm grilling him and then he rolls down his window when he starts shooting like bomb 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 i'm like fuck fam after the first shot i felt something hit me so i flipped over and i ran into my backyard fam and I hopped the fence. And when I hopped the fence, I realized the bogey still in my hand. So I'm like, what the fuck is this bogey still doing in my hand? I tossed it. And I'm like, fuck, I ran to the store. And I asked the store man one more time, did I get shot? Look, he's like, yes. So I'm like, call the ambulance, fam. That's cap. Uh, hey, I'm telling you that's cap. Have you have you ever been shot before and then thought, oh no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to POV record a video of me running away? No, you're not. That's cap, bro. That's cap. I think that whole story's cap. First of all, you have to have some serious problems with niggas for anyone to shoot at you in Toronto because it's guns is like you don't just you don't just shoot guns unless you want to do a lot of time in jail, bro. There's cameras everywhere, my nigga. Okay. Second of all, that's cap. I don't believe that story. I think that story is literally a myth, bro. Well, I'm glad you're okay, bro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Let's actually let's wait till he finishes before we come to a, a, a final. Um, conclusion on the story. Hold on. Hold on, wait. If he was actually shot, hold on. Let's actually see for a second. That was a scary shot. That was the scariest thing I ever seen in my life. That's why I changed my rap name. You say you guys are riding. I say all you guys are lying. That's not I his vid. About hiding Facts. And I say all you guys are hiding. I slide. Say hi. My guys got straps in his side. Yeah, hi. I'm live. QP, I spent about five. Two threes, you see my fees. Send me beats and EMTs. Fuck up, bitch in the BMB. I blew up like. Alright, zoom out this nigga fucking teeth, bro. We get it. His teeth is in horrible shape, my nigga. Jeez, Louise. This cameraman is dick sucking this nigga teeth. We get it, bro. This nigga hasn't brushed. He brushed once a week. <clears throat> zoom out. Fuck. That'd be like if the cameraman, if they ever, if Channel Five ever zoomed in on my forehead, all interview, I'd be tight. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I'll be fucking furious. Just zoom out, bro. We don't want to see the nigga plaque. Like, the, he hasn't flossed between this section right here and God knows how long, my nigga. One, if he flossed just one time right there. TNT. <laughs> just when I thought I had Canada figured out, I found myself in a strange land far, far away from the cowboys and gravel miners of Calgary. <laughs> I extract rocks out of the earth, crush them and process them into uniform shapes to be used in concrete. I knew nothing of Toronto, other than the fact that it was kind of fucked up. Toronto's kind of fucked up. So I had to learn more. But I wasn't sure how to begin. That's when I remembered. One of my favorite college professors, Dr. Jim Dugan, once told me that in the field of anthropology, the best way to understand a culture is in its language. Hey. Language is how people negotiate, contest, communicate, and reproduce cultural forms using verbal expression. I figured I'd begin my research by developing a lexicon of Toronto terminology. Could you break some basic Toronto slang down for us? Okay, okay, so first of all, you have I'm cheesed or you're cheesing me. Yeah. I'm cheesed means I'm mad, you're cheesing <laughs> me means you're pissing me off. There's also a life mosh, like when something like messes your life up just for a second. I'll give you an example. One time I dropped all my weed on the floor and like my life was mosh because I couldn't even smoke my weed no more that I just bought. To get girked is to get robbed. When someone girks you, they robbed you or they beat you up. Honestly, anytime I ever got girked, I got back at the people that tried to do that shit to me. I don't want to talk about that shit though. I've been girked before though, but I girked the man back. Do you say A or anything like that? Fucking A, that guy's a beauty, eh? All the gas prices, eh? Ukraine doesn't need fuck off. I say A sometimes, yeah? At the end of the sentence, sometimes, sometimes. Not really. I say fam after every sentence. Yeah, niggas don't be saying A, bro. Okay, there's two types of slang, chat. This is true in Toronto, okay? This is how you know who you're talking to, okay? I'm gonna help you out, all right? You gotta ask them what their favorite sport is, okay? If they say hockey, their slang is completely different than the shit he's talking about. If they say basketball, then this is what the slang usually, I'm telling you the difference, bro. Huge difference between the hockey crowd and the basketball crowd. Colossal difference, bro. If you talk to the hockey niggas, they kind of sound more like milk sounds. You feel me? And they say A a lot. 
Is there anything you won't say? I won't say shit that'll get me put in jail. <laughs> so my Smart name is man. Plush and I'm from Western Road. You already know. Let's get it. Let's go. Growing up, broke, remember eating canned food. They always judge me because I stay misunderstood. Bitch, oh, bro, that build is so crazy. <laughs> hey. Hey, there's hella talented Toronto artists, bro. I swear to God. She's not a, even an artist. Please don't leave this video thinking Toronto artists fucking suck like her. Please, bro. There's so many talented niggas out there, bro. All right. If you don't fuck with me, you're a loser, fam. You gotta fuck with me. I'm gonna put Western Road on the map. You already know. Let's get it. Let's go. It's plush. Western Road is a road in Toronto, and it's my community. Yes. Is that when Drake says, I finessed on Western Road? Is he talking yes. about where you're from? Yes, we all finesse. What does it mean to finesse on Western Road? Um, It means like you're, you're probably, Nigga said, the, one, not you're probably the one on that block <laughs> making the most You heard her? I don't know shit about Western Road, chat. I'm from the, I'm from, who the hell? I thought I heard something. I'm from the east side. Western Road is on the west side. Honey, you're flipping the packs. You're finessing these mans out of their pocket. Only, only Western Road mans can finesse on Western Road, actually. Like, if you're not from Western Road, please don't come on Western Road. The fire crews are hosing down the scene here at the strip plaza here at Western Road. So how would you describe your environment growing up? So I grew up on Western Road, like South Side-ish, West End Lawrence. East side. Um, it's quite a community <laughs> there. I didn't really run into a lot of problems there. I honestly love it. Um, it's a little bit rough. Like I didn't fit in in school too much. Yeah, you know I'm on that drill shit. You know I see you on my block with your new bitch. I used to come home and chill like on the block. West End Lions, you already know what's up. But yeah, I would say if you know what's up, it's okay. Just stay to yourself. You move how Why you move. Why are they making a whole city look Calgary? bad? I have never been. Can you teach us some basic rudimentary Toronto slang? Nice it. Basically, shut the f up, you feel me? Nice your beak like you're too annoying. Guaguan, what's up? Um, buck tea, you feel me? Like a homeless person lurking around. Um, you got balling up rules. If the spliff is Ita, don't even pass it to me. And that means there's no grab on the spliff, and that's rough. If you don't smoke with grab, you, you don't feel the tump. I don't know. I'm from the West End. Come collect your man. Bitch gang gang. Bitch gang gang. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret, okay? The reason why she's this unbearable to listen to, guys, is because she knows if she just talks normally, nobody's gonna pay attention. And that, like, she She's making the whole city look bad, bro. Bitch, you're a telly bitch. Go get your money, sis. How do you feel about Israel? Um, that's a very <laughs> scary topic to talk about. But I'm Palestinian, so let's just remember, like, even my father who had... Layup! Layup answer for you if you're Palestinian. What the fuck? To move from Palestine, like, years ago, like, 60 years ago. Uh, uh, this is after a brief civil war with the Palestinians, uh, the indigenous inhabitants of Palestine. About 720,000 of them were forced to flee for a variety of reasons, including terror, including ethnic cleansing. Like, it was still going on then, and the media is just really shining on it now. So let's just remember that it's been going on, and let's just pray, you yeah. know? But the government, Canada, like, it's so quick. You guys hopped to bring Ukrainians here. What did you do for Palestine? We stand with Israel, women and Kids have been forced out of their homes. It's unimaginable. Just saying. Let's get it. Let's go. Right? Do you know where the Toronto accent came from? Bro, Justin Trudeau, Justin Trudeau would never do anything to oppose America. Or a nigga's cooked, bro. He hasn't had the balls to do it, bro. If America says jump, nigga, niggas say, ha ha, I got jump. Ha ha, I got jump, Biden. It's impossible. Nigga will never do nothing. It don't matter if at his core he believes differently. He can't do shit to oppose him. So as long as America believes the way... Nigga, Canada believes a way. That's just, it's kind of like the same, low key, the same thing. Like, there's some countries that just have really strong ties, uh, like Australia and China, for example, or like we're like, damn, there's certain things you just kind of had to go with because the other country that you rely on so heavily is saying one thing one way. Yeah, it came from different places because Toronto is like, everybody in Toronto is like from a different place, fam, unless you're born in Toronto. Where's your family from? My family's from Jamaica. But a lot of the slang is Jamaican, like Ute. Big up the Ute, them. Big up the whole island, massive. Jana star. But you also have a lot of Somalis out here that um, a lot of people copy their slang too, like Bukhtis. Where, where did that come from? You feel me? <laughs> Depends who you 
you show it, I see people talk like me that are any color. Who talks like that? How they talk. Because they're going to pick up the lingo from your friends. Do you know a lot of Jamaicans? Um, I do, I do. Right now in my life, I'm very dolo. I cut mostly everyone off. But yeah, before I used to chill around a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of Africans. I was very diverse. At some point, I realized that what I believed to be the Toronto accent was really just a modified version of the semi-pigeon English spoken by Jamaicans in England. Man yes. did my thing today. I gave out the Canada gizzard. Kiss, kiss. You know what I'm saying, fam? Love you, bro which composes a very small minority of Toronto residents. The vast majority of the metro area sounds pretty much like I do. So to get a more standard Anglo-normative understanding of what it means to be a Toronto man's, I went to the nearby suburb of Mississauga to meet with a local man who claimed to be very well versed in Canadian history and geopolitics. Okay. He's right, by the way, he's right. The reason why people sound like that is a lot of Jamaican culture in Toronto. And then they took that, and then they're like, how can we make this shit sound a little worse? And that's what most of the niggas did, bro. But, like, 80% of people, it, nah. Like, literally, bro, most people don't just sound normal. They sound like me. Like, most people sound normal. And everyone that sounds like the Toronto accent that niggas be thinking about, they turn it on. They don't talk. If you find them at their job, they're not going to talk like that. They just talk like that around their fucking friends and shit. So, um, for those who don't know, can you tell us your name and what, what you're known for? My name's Kyle Forjard. Uh, I guess I'm known for being in the Nelk Boys. And you are Canadian. I'm Canadian. From Mississauga, Ontario. What I'm trying fuck? to learn as much as I can about Canadian culture. So I was hoping I could ask you a few things about what it means to be Canadian and different regional specifics that could help me get a better understanding of your great nation. Okay. What do Canadians take the most pride in? Hot girls. Toronto, the women are the best possible women to have sex with. Very monogamous and great in bed. Hockey. It is just after 8.30. The game ended about an hour ago. And this is the scene on Georgia Street. Good food. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we fucking battled with the, the English and the French fought over us, right? English won. They gave the French Quebec. And English took the rest. Canada ranks among the top 10 happiest countries in the world. Bro, who just said bad food? Oh my God. If you went to Toronto and got bad food, that's 100% your fault. There are so many dope options. And because it's the most multicultural city in the world, you don't just have one genre of food. It's all the genres, my nigga. All the genres. All the genres is fire. Nigga, you can go there and... Get some of the best Indian food you've had, and then get some of the best Chinese, and get some of the best Jamaican, and then get some fire barbecue, bro. If you miss, it's because you like to airball, my nigga. Don't put that on the city. Nigga's crazy. World. Growing up in Canada was like a blessing. What's your favorite childhood memory? Just playing street hockey every day after school. Like every day, just come home, straight to the garage, grab the hockey sticks. Street hockey. I played basketball. Yeah! Till dinner. <laughs> Maybe a little street hockey after. <laughs> what, the one Bedtime, wake up for school the next day, repeat. Oh, no, no, oh, no, I no, fucking burned! Keep the condom on there, keep the condom on there. What's your most traumatic childhood memory? Fuck. Oh my god, one time I was home alone, feel me? We wasn't supposed to be home alone, my mom had left the crib to do some shit. I called the police as a joke, but I banged the phone, I thought it was hilarious. But then the police showed up to the house literally like 30 minutes later. And I was scared for my life because it was illegal for us to be there by ourselves. It was me and my older brother. So we hid. While the police were knocking on the door, walking around in the backyard, we hid behind a TV in the fucking basement for three hours. And then when we thought they were finally gone, we ran to our cousin's house down the street. It was so embarrassing. And then when my mom got home, I thought she was going to kill me. But she was just thankful we didn't get caught. <laughs> I don't really have one, man. I just had such a fun childhood. I don't know. It was fire. What makes it different uh, traditionally from the United States? I think it's less racist. There's obviously, like, there's always going to be racism, right? But you can't, like, eradicate racism. But it's just different. I don't know. I mean, I guess we're known for having nice people, but I feel like there's a lot of Canadian assholes, too. Where do you think the most assholes in Canada live? Quebec. Why is that? <laughs> just kind of stuck up. You know, like, if you don't speak French and shit, they don't really fuck with you. Like, you go to Tim Hortons, you ask for a coffee, you got to order in French. 
a bagel with fucking cheese and, and garlic. I said it three times. Sorry, I don't speak a English. A bagel. <laughs> Bitch. Just. No, it's not. Oh, oh, XQC is from Quebec. I forgot. Oh, shit. I never been to Quebec before. I didn't know they get tight if you don't know French. Okay. I don't have to speak. You guys are racist, discriminating people. The surveillance camera captures an employee throwing a cup of coffee on a customer. Yo. Sometimes I just want to speak English still, you know? Like, Yo. Has Canada changed since you were a youngster? Yeah, definitely. I think it's just more like, it's just becoming more and more like government controlled now. It's like fucking borderline communist now, I think. It's like, it's crazy. Canada's Botox dictator, Justin Trudeau, wasted no time <laughs> using the tragedy of the US to his hey. own political advantage in Canada. Today, we are closing the market for military grade assault weapons in Canada. We are banning 1500 models and variants of these firearms by way of regulations. He's a loser. I don't know, just the way he handled the whole fucking pandemic shit, I thought was like pretty bullshit. We are implementing the Quarantine Act to keep all Canadians safe. Face coverings come mandatory in Toronto. Nah, uh, nah, that shit actually is crazy chat. Truckers were pissed that they had to get like 17 different fucking vaccination shots. So they started to protest and to raise money so that they could afford to protest, they created a GoFundMe. Bro, this nigga Justin Trudeau seized people's bank accounts. He froze truckers. I've never seen anything like that. Like, what? Like, I can't think of a better way to undermine the entire financial institutions in the country than to tell people like, eh, just by the way, if we don't agree with you, we're going to seize your bank accounts, my nigga. You don't even have to, you're not doing anything illegal. We're seizing that shit, nigga. That's so crazy. Looking back, that's one of the craziest things I think a president's ever done in Canadian history. It has to be. But that shit was crazy as hell, man. And most eastern parts of the province. A York Region I'll couple has been charged after allegedly breaking the federal quarantine act. So they want to use me as an example. They want to throw the book at me. They literally got locked up for like two years. It was depressing, dude. What? How do Canadians feel about PC culture? Did I just hear someone use a microaggression? Like cancellation? Oh, I locked up for two yeah. years. But I think there is like a huge bit of people in Canada that are like fed up with, with PC bullshit. I think, yeah, I think COVID just really set people off. Like at first I'd go back and no one was, everyone was agreeing with the government. And then like six months later, everyone's like, KO, enough's enough. And it became like, I feel like people are speaking out now. They're low key, shout out to Atlanta. And I uh, say, Atlanta was a great place to be during COVID, bro. Cause everything is spread out. It's not really that dense. And they weren't fucking beating you over the head with a whole bunch of rules. Low key, shout out Atlanta. Bro, like there was, inter like for example, let's say for example, no, you won't even have to be outside. Like I don't party nothing like that. But I'm saying if I want to rent a studio to do a, 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 to have like, to just take photographs with three people, you can't do that in Toronto during, during quarantine. You can't do it. So you can't work. You can't work. That was such a crazy time. But in Atlanta, they opened things up pretty quickly. They still had some rules. Like if you went to a Hawks game, you had to wear a mask and shit. But it wasn't so overbearing that you couldn't do your job. You couldn't live. You couldn't do simple shit. That was a crazy time, bro. Indian truckers, you've been reading about it. That's crazy. That's crazy. We are with them all the way. They are. They've really shown something. These shout big rigs have a lot to, to say. Trudeau closed down the border to any um, transnational movement of international long haul truckers that were carrying goods um, if they weren't vaccinated. These kind of choices shouldn't be mandated. For two weeks now, these protesters have laid siege to this city. The state of emergency has now been declared in Ontario. How do you think that like Toronto is different from the rest of the country? Toronto's just like that city. Like Toronto's just like. The scene in Toronto, the city's like, it's always on fire, especially in the summer too. Like the bars, the restaurants. I think Toronto is the hottest girls. They're just hot, bro. They're just, I don't know. You've been there, right? Mm -hmm. I like to lay out like a dead. All right, bro. I can't believe this is the only bitch you got in the whole video, bro. The women in Toronto are actually genuinely very beautiful. And everyone that goes there says this. I'm not making this shit up. Ask anyone who's been there. They'll tell you the same thing, bro. Feel me? They'll tell you the same thing, but I'm mad this is the only one y'all got a chance to see. And now y'all niggas gonna leave thinking Toronto's just a whole bunch of niggas being shit on by fat bitches and shit. That fish. I would let Rick Ross shit in my mouth. 
Why? He's tatted up, he's big, like, you know, he's sexy. Who else would you let shit in your mouth? Um, you. I don't know if I'd be able to bring myself there mentally. Why? Well, because I'm sort of uh, bathroom shy. So are you capping? I'm not, I would never cap in the face of a legend. <laughs> you like ASAP yams? Yeah, I do. You have a crybaby tattoo? Yeah. Is that for Lil Pete? Yeah. I think he's sexy and I wish he would come alive and fuck me. A research associate told me that Toronto has the most attractive and coolest women in the world. Do you believe that is true? No. Because Toronto tings are set up. They're set up tings. What's a set up ting? They set up people, you know? They're like, they're not... Like you think it's a hot girl, but it's a girl's older brother kicks you in the... Why is she? Come on, bro. She... Oh, man. I hate I hate everyone he interviewed except... Well, a lot of them. Some of them are cool. Nuts. Takes your iPhone? Basically, yeah. Not their brother, more likely their, their pimp. There's a lot of greasers there, too. What's a greaser? Just like a not, not a very good looking girl. Okay. Doesn't shower, like, you know. All right, what are the top five greaser cities in Canada? <laughs> Brantford, Ontario. I haven't even been there, but I just know, like, Regina, Saskatchewan. <laughs> like, there can't be anything good going on there. I haven't been, but I just know. Um, <laughs> Hamilton, Ontario. Well, Hell, Hamilton's one of the craziest places I've ever had the glory of walking into, bro. Bro, I think there's more crackheads in that city than civilians, man. Was only Surrey, BC. Now I'll freaking steal your car. Yeah, and Fredericton, New Brunswick. What about up north in uh, Baffin Island? Baffin Island? <laughs> a few thousand people. It's probably mostly greasers. There's probably that one dime up there that's just waiting to be discovered. Are you gonna go up there? <laughs> yeah. I'll go with you if you do. Really? Why not? I've never been. You wanna go to Baffin? Sure. What do you, what's your dream for your whole life? Just to be set up for life, set my family up for life, set my friends up, and then hopefully yeah, just be doing something close that I love still. Don't ever get a pimp. Pimps are fucking useless. Be the fucking renegade in the tally. Make your own money, keep your own money. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for talking to us. We've learned a lot. We're happy to be in your country. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, gentlemen. What do you guys think about her? She's a fucking Toronto legend, fam. Holy. One of a kind, fam. One of a kind from Toronto. Was there a particular moment in that interview that stood out as being exceptionally Canadian? Canadian, but I don't know if that's Canadian. That's just, uh... Canadians aren't fucking... It was the natives, you know, like if you really think about it. So like those are Canadians, but it depends oh. who you talk to still. Do you have a fucking Canadian passport, my nigga? Then you're Canadian. What kind of shit answer is that? Because by that logic, there's no Americans really neither because 99% of the niggas watching this shit are not native to America. Them niggas came here recently in the last few hundred years, bro. So that means literally there's no Americans that exist. <laughs> Oh, what a horrible answer. You know, but Toronto is filled with a whole bunch of sick people, you know? Sick people like all of us, you know? I think um, we must give our thanks to the people who gave us this land so we can bust wheelies on it. That's what I say. Bust wheelies? So you guys go pretty hard on the bikes. He almost died. Injured myself oh last my year, injured myself this year, off from the bikes. Is there a video of this fall? <laughs> You're a pussy fam. Um, hold on, I need a minute. I need a minute, I fucking forgot the Toronto Barber Tings, MV Fade, um, that I Toronto like I've seen you, I feel like I've seen you on TikTok before. Man. Come on, like, I've man. I've seen this guy before. Let me give you a piece of grava. But yeah, guys, balling up rules, and I don't share my splizzy with no one because there's things guaning out here. Bro, what and is she saying? Like, why is she just yapping? She's not even saying nothing. Bro. She just, she's just going on like, it's like a stream of consciousness. If I said the things she said ever on stream, y'all niggas would immediately tell me I'm chatting, bro. Yeah. After years exploring the depths of America, I felt that finally I'd found Look paradise <laughs> in the great white up. north. <laughs> a place of liberation, a multicultural success, free from the oppressive chains of the American regime. But now that I'd spoken with my brothers and sisters up north, I had a burning curiosity about our amigos and amigas down south. Peace. Oh, you about to go to Mexico! Oh!
Hola, mi nombre es Andrew Callahan y hoy estamos en una ciudad que se llama Eagle Pass, una ciudad en Texas muy cerca a la frontera. In the past couple of years or the past couple of months, Eagle Pass has kind of been the center of the uh, border crisis in the U.S. I think the uh, Border Patrol and ICE's budget is about 17 and 18 billion dollars per year, and they spend most of that money fortifying more traffic borders, like the border between El Paso and Juarez, San Ysidro and Tijuana, nah. and even Laredo. More traffic borders, like the border between El Paso and handling barbed wire with your physical hands got to be one of the most insane things. That's nuts. Juarez, San Ysidro, and Tijuana, and even Laredo in South Texas. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, hey, Muggy Wara major in the tap. I have to catch a 600 second. <laughs> Yo, why the fuck I look at the chat and think it's an avocado from Mexico? <laughs> Hey, bro, you dead, man. You dumb as hell for that, bro. In the past year alone, about 2 million people have traveled <laughs> illegally into the U.S. Oh, man. And the center of the migrant crisis has kind of been right here in Eagle Pass. So we're going to go into Mexico. <laughs> that means, like, that's the only thing you know about Mexico. Channel 5 Live Worldwide, Hollywood and Vine. Fuck the authority, Channel 5 News. Channel 55, we don't fuck with Custers. And 5 is the best number. What's up guys? Th thanks so much for watching this video. If you've made it to this point, I have great news for you. You're in the 95th percentile of attention span for Americans aged 25 to 32. I'll be trying to niggas say I have a TikTok attention span. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's good to be here with you guys. I'd like to remind you that Channel 5 is and will always be completely independent and powered directly by your contributions on our Patreon. All right, here comes the promo. Okay, we're gonna stop at 96%. Uh, w video though, Channel 5. W fucking video, man.